good morning and peace to you. Welcome to First United Methodist Church of Roseville, where we do our best to live into the gospel message of love as a community committed to offering hope to this world. Uh, we take great joy in being able to be here this morning because we are often reminded that life is not promised, nor is the day. And therefore, this being a day that God has made and prepared for us to share, where we cannot help but what? <laughs> Indeed. This day is special for a multitude of reasons, one of which is that I get to sit back and be ministered unto. Uh, Minister Jan Seacrest, it will be facilitating the message this morning in collaboration with many other people within the church who we will see soon. And for that I am so very grateful. Because even for a pastor, it's important for, for me to breathe sometimes. And to be able to pray and be able to meditate. Because the days are hard, you know, when we look at at the news, it's not easy to say that there's a lot going on. Um, even now, churches like our own have been receiving threats and harassments, which just mirrors a greater context of divisiveness of these times in which we are in. But because of that, it is important that we come together. Because of that, it is important that we gather to demonstrate to ourselves and to the world that we are much more than what the media portrays. <laughs> that there is still goodness in this world that is being played out in our communities. And yes, divisions and partisanship is very much alive and present, but our faith tells us that that reality does not have the final word. That life is greater. That hope is greater. That love is greater. We are here this morning gathering to stand for, participate in, and if need be, even struggle for that something greater. Because of that, this is a beautiful day. One that God has made and prepared for us to share. Therefore, let us be Amen. So, at this time, I um, invite Dave Seacrest to lead us in our call to worship. If you are able, I now welcome you to stand as we begin. Good morning, church. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. In the beginning, when it was very dark, God said, let there be light. And there was light. In the beginning, when it was very quiet, the Word was with God. And when God was, the Word was. When the time was right, God sent the Son. He came among us. He was among us. Let us worship the triune God. Amen.
They didn't waste a minute. They were up and on their way back to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their friends gathered together, talking away. It's really happened, and the Master has raised up. Simon saw him. Then the two went over everything that happened on the road and how they recognized him when he broke the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to see you, God. We stand and join the hymn of the because community 
is a sacred and fertile ground in which our relationship with God and others is nurtured and transforms us into the healed and loving person God intends us to be. As Lena Horne, that famous singer who endured so many burdens in her life, so wisely pointed out, it's not the load that breaks you down, it's how you carry it. We are also called as a community to be the hands and feet of Christ so that the love of the Lord and God in our hearts can be given out freely. We share all our riches equally. Without an outer expression of that love and trust in God, faith without works is dead, as pointed out in the James scripture earlier this month. Let me share the following reflection of being called into community. This reflection was written by my friend Carol, who is a member of Castro Valley United Methodist Church, which is the church Dave and I transferred from. She has given me permission to share it. I think it aptly describes the kind of faith community Christ helped, excuse me, calls us to. She writes, I have a basket of pens and pencils next to my phone. They're supposed to make my life easier, not having to rush around looking for a pen or pencil that works. They're all colors, and some work, some don't. I have one that is crooked at the top to advertise a chiropractor. Some seem dry, but as I write, the ink flows. This reminds me of church congregations. We come in all shapes and sizes and colors and have different gifts to share. Some are full of energy. Others are tired and need to be rejuvenated. There are some who have taken time off and now need to come back and be part of the working community of faith. Like pens and pencils that are there, when one gives out and doesn't work, we as a congregation are there for each other when we need help, each sharing when and where we are able. Look around. There's a place for you. We are all in ministry to each other and to God. Amen. And now, hear this prayer by the prayer reporter. Called by Christ to community, to worship, to pray, to learn to care. This is not a place for us to be unchanged and exclusive. Here we bring our common brokenness and blessing. Healing happens by God's grace, and our gifts are given for service. Here in Christ's love and compassion, we belong to each other. Here, the stranger is welcomed and called friend. Amen. So wait, we're not finished. <laughs> and now, with the readers of our story, the rabbi's gift, please assemble. This story of community called the rabbi's gift is from the book, The Different Drama, Community Making and Peace by M. Scott Peck. The Rabbi's Gift. This story concerns a monastery that had fallen upon hard times. Once a great order, as a result of waves of anti monastic persecution in the 17th and 18th centuries, and the rise of secularism in the 19th, all its branch houses were lost, and it had become decimated to the extent that there were only five months left in the decaying mother house. The abbot and four others, all over 70 in age, clearly it was a dying order. In the deep woods surrounding the monastery, 
there was a little hut that a rabbi from a nearby town occasionally used for a hermitage. Through their many years of prayer and contemplation, the old monks had become a bit psychic, so they could always sense when the rabbi was in his hermitage. The rabbi is in the woods. The rabbi is in the woods again. They would whisper to each other. As he agonized over the imminent death of his order, it occurred to the abbot at one such time to visit the hermitage and ask the rabbi if by some possible chance he could offer any advice that might save the monastery. The rabbi welcomed the abbot to his hut. But when the abbot explained the purpose of his visit, the rabbi could only commiserate with him. I know how it is, he exclaimed. The spirit of it has gone out of the people. It seems that in our town, Almost no one comes to the synagogue anymore. So the old rabbi and the old abbot wept together. They read parts of the Torah and quietly spoke of deep things. The time came when the abbot had to leave. They embraced each other. It's been a wonderful thing that we should meet after all these years. The abbot said. But I have still failed in my purpose for coming here. Is there nothing that you can tell me that would help me save my dying work? No, I'm sorry. The rabbi responded. I have no advice to give. The only thing I can tell you is that the Messiah is one of you. When the abbot returned to the monastery, his fellow monks gathered around him to ask. Well, what did the rabbi say? He couldn't help. The abbot answered. He just wept and read the Torah together. The only thing he did say, just as I was leaving, and it was something cryptic, that the Messiah is one of us. I don't know what he meant. In the days and weeks and months that followed, the old monks pondered this and wondered whether there was any possible significance to the rabbi's words. The Messiah is one of us? Could he possibly have meant one of us monks here at the monastery? If that's the case, which one? You suppose he meant the abbot? Yes, if he meant anyone, he probably meant Father Abbot. He has been our leader for more than a generation. On the other hand, he might have met Brother Thomas. Certainly Brother Thomas is a holy man. Everyone knows that Thomas is a man of light. Certainly, he could not have met Brother Albert. Albert gets crotchety at times. <laughs> but come to think of it, even though he's a thorn in people's sides, when you look back on it, Albert is virtually always right. Often very right. Maybe the rabbi did mean Brother Albert. But surely not Brother Philip. Philip is so passive, a real nobody. But then, almost mysteriously, he has a gift for somehow always being there when you need him. He just magically appears by your side. Maybe Philip is the Messiah. Of course the rabbi didn't mean me. He couldn't possibly have meant me. I'm just an ordinary person. Yet supposing he did. Suppose I am the Messiah. Oh, God, not me. I couldn't be that much for you, could I? As they contemplated in this manner, the old monks began to treat each other with extraordinary respect on the odd chance that one among them might be the Messiah, and on the off-off chance that each monk himself might be the Messiah, they began to treat themselves with extraordinary respect. Because the forest in which it was situated was beautiful, it so happened that people still occasionally came to visit the monastery to picnic on its tiny lawn, to wander along some of its paths, even now and then to go into the dilapidated chapel to meditate. 
As they did so, without even being conscious of it, they sensed this aura of extraordinary respect that now began to surround the five old monks and seemed to radiate out from them and permeate the atmosphere of the place. There was something strangely attractive, even compelling about it. Hardly knowing why, they began to come back to the monastery more frequently to picnic, to play, to pray. They began to bring their friends to show them this special place, and their friends brought their friends. Then it happened that some of the younger men who came to visit the monastery started to talk more and more with the old monks. After a while, one asked if he could join them, then another, and another. So, within a few years, the monastery had once again become a thriving order, and thanks to the rabbi's gift, a vibrant center of life and spirituality in the burnt realm. Amen. We don't pretend to understand the mystery of what goes on in God's church. We just know we feel a pervading spirit of love that reaches into the niches of all of us and pulls us out into the open, free and alive and belonging. We believe this spirit of love exists because God's spirit lives within this church. This unity of persons primed to be the good news. We see this church as a circle of persons holding hands and dancing, supporting each other, accepting each other, loving each other. Each person in this dancing circle is facing outward, reaching into God's world, listening for the whimpering watching for the hurting, willing to offer a cup of cold water in his name. Sometimes they need the water. Sometimes you need the water. Sometimes I need the water. Being a part of the church means knowing that the cup is always filled in his name. Amen. Amen. Would you all stand and join in closing him? We are God's people.
Amen. 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 Let's um, show our appreciation to everyone who participated in that, including the band. Um, I love that final analogy about water. It, it just so happens I was drinking <laughs> as it was spoken, and it was so true. There's times where I give water, there's times when I need to receive water, but this is a place where water is given. And we are all called to be in that community. So I'm so very grateful um, to be, um, to have this opportunity to have my own thirst just kind of quenched. Amen? Amen. Amen? All right, let us close in prayer. Dear God, now as we prepare to leave, I pray that we will take heed of the message that we receive today that of being in community. May we know that God walks with us and empowers us to do good. May we also know and be representations of Christ's unfailing love to others. And now, as we go out into the rest of the week, may we do so with the assurance of your perfect peace. Let us now sing. Amen.